did you fail BEC? If you failed BEC, then you probably mixed up some basic information technology terms. For example, do you know machine learning versus artificial intelligence? Do you know what the difference is between those two? How about the difference between an executive support system, accounting information system, and an enterprise resource planning system? If you failed BEC, maybe you got stuck on software as a service versus platform as a service versus infrastructure as a service. And these have to do with cloud computing. What about data mining versus data warehousing? You got to know the difference between those two. And online real-time processing versus batch processing. Very important to know that they're not the same term. And artificial intelligence versus machine learning. A little different there. How about Bitcoin versus blockchain? Are they exactly the same thing? No. And the exam will make sure that you understand the difference. Same with this. Drill down versus slice and dice. Not the same. Maybe the AICPA BEC exam gave you a question like this and you weren't sure which to choose. Which of the following best describes the use of information systems facilities to focus on the collection, organization, integration, and long-term storage of entity-wide data? What would we pick from this list here? What's the focus of this question? What do they want to know? They want to know about focusing on collection, organization, integration, and long-term storage of entity-wide data. That's data warehousing, isn't it? So the exam will ask you a question like that, give you a drop-down list that includes all of these, and you got to pick the right one and leave the rest. So if you didn't know what a data warehouse was when you took the exam, make sure you know what it is next time. A data warehouse is a database designed to archive an organization's operational transactions, its sales, its production, its purchases, and payroll over a period of years. So they could give you a sim like this on all these IT terms, and the second question might be something like this. Use of the cloud to access a virtual data center of resources, including a network, computers, and storage. And right back to the same list, what would we pick to answer this one? What would be use of the cloud, cloud computing, virtual data center of resources, including a network, computers, and storage? Is that software as a service? Is it platform as a service? Is it infrastructure as a service? What do you think? Or is it one of these others? Well, we got to narrow down to these three. This is our cloud computing three here. And it would be infrastructure as a service, since they're asking about a virtual data center of resources, network, computers, and storage. That's all infrastructure. Now, you don't have to be a cloud computing expert to pass the BEC exam, but you've got to know the difference between software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. Ready for another one? Good. Here we go. Use of the cloud to create software and programs. So once again, we're focusing on our three friends from cloud computing here. Use of the cloud to create software. That's not software as a service because software as a service, we would be using the cloud to access our software, not to create it. This would be platform as a service. Using the cloud to create software, we need a platform in the cloud that acts as a service so that we could create software and programs. The answer would be platform as a service. How about this one? A company subscribes to cloud-based access to Microsoft Office 365. That would be software as a service. So here, instead of buying the software, you subscribe to a cloud-based version of it. That's software as a service. Why isn't it platform as a service? Because in this one, we are accessing the software. We're not creating it. If we were creating the software on a cloud-based platform, then it would be platform as a service. Here, we're not creating the software. We're just accessing the software. Software as a service. All right, what about this one? An emerging technology where companies use customer support agents that have natural language processing ability and are able to interact with humans. Okay, so an emerging technology, maybe something like machine learning or artificial intelligence, right? Those are emerging technologies. What about blockchain and Bitcoin? Those are emerging technologies too. So which one of these would describe support agents that have natural language processing ability? They can interact with humans, and that, of course, would be what? 
artificial intelligent agents. So if you weren't ready to talk a little artificial intelligence when you took the BEC exam, you better be ready the next time because artificial intelligent agents, they began as customer support telephone agents. Companies used them when customers would call in, but they've evolved into more sophisticated artificial intelligent agents now like Siri and Alexa. And even now into a fleet of drones that could monitor and deliver inventory, artificial intelligence relies on fast computing and big data. Let's try this one, an emerging technology that provides an independent, secure, non-modifiable audit trail of transactions that are collected into an open ledger database. So it's another emerging technology, non-modifiable audit trail of transactions, open ledger database. What are we talking about? Is that Bitcoin? Not exactly because Bitcoin is more of a payment system. This describes blockchain. Blockchain provides an independent, secure, non-modifiable audit trail of transactions that are collected into an open ledger database. Blockchain was created along with Bitcoin. Blockchain was created as part of the invention of Bitcoins to provide a secure, decentralized tracking system for Bitcoins. But blockchain has evolved into many different uses that do not even involve Bitcoin. And one of its greatest advantages includes continuous monitoring of an accounting system because of its open ledger. The fact that it's an open ledger database, a non-modifiable audit trail, makes it very useful for continuous monitoring. And that has a good use for auditors now and in the future. So look for a question about blockchain or even Bitcoin on your next CPA BEC exam. All right, how about another one? An emerging decentralized payment system where the currency is created by solving math puzzles quickly with extremely fast computers, there's your Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is an emerging decentralized payment system. What else do you need to know about Bitcoin? It's a decentralized currency taxed by the IRS as property. IRS doesn't tax Bitcoin as currency. When you trade Bitcoin, they don't tax you as though you traded currency. They tax you as though you traded property. And Bitcoin relies on a peer-to-peer -peer network and encryption technology. Bitcoins are created by mining, which is basically solving math puzzles quickly with fast computers. Hey, Darius, give us one more. Okay, sure. A system that integrates multiple subsystems into one large organizational database and facilitates information exchange and collaboration among all parties in the business. What does that describe down here? Is that batch processing or online real-time processing? No, it doesn't say we're processing data. It says a system that integrates multiple subsystems into one large organizational database, facilitates information exchange and collaboration among all parties in the business. Why don't you leave me a comment on this YouTube video and let me know what you think the answer is. Or you can go to cpaexamtutoring.com Hit the contact us button and you can talk to me there. I pulled this sim for you right out of my I-75 BEC course. And if you want to watch this entire sim for free, go to cpaexamtutoring.com and click the contact us button. And then I'll get back to you personally and make sure that you can watch this entire sim for free. If you're stuck somewhere on your CPA exam journey, why don't you get on I-75 and take it to your next pass. Is passing the CPA exam harder than doing a backflip? Well, the answer is it's all about preparation. Hi, I'm Darius Clark, and here at I-75 CPA Review, I'm going to put you on the right road. So when you go to take FAR, Audit, BEC, and Reg, you're going to have so much confidence you're going to be like this guy doing a backflip. So go to cpaexamtutoring.com and take I-75 to your next pass. Because the only thing more painful than failing the CPA exam is failing a backflip. So for just $109 a month, become a monthly subscriber to I-75 CPA Review and get all four parts for the same subscription.